the top. Hey guys, we are doing a pack opening of Ignition Assault. We are opening what appears to be about two boxes worth of packs that I got from judging the Ultimate Duelist series. Um, I do have the chat turned off just in case, but uh, for the most part, this is a live experience that we're doing on Twitch. Uh, just don't want anybody to jeopardize that by saying something silly. But if you see all the medals we've got here, all of these are some of the new swag medals that came from uh, the event or various other events that we were able to pick up at the UBS. And it was the last North American Ultimate Duel series. Um, first one that's probably my favorite is the one that's very Jaden Yuki. It's got Jaden Yuki's little yoke around his collar here, and that's the one that they gave out to people who participated in this event. Um, the other ones are, this one's from one of the older ones during the Steel War Calcos run. And, I mean, I'm not keeping it in the baggie for any particular reason, but it is Maximilian Pexis here, UBS Invitational with little green, sort of Seal War Calcos coloring. Um, speaking of Seal War Calcos, I don't know if I'm going to open this. It's a translucent field center that is the Seal War Calcos. And then I, of course, have um, the Millennium Puzzle one, which is one of the older ones that I did not have. This is one that I just put up here, but it's actually one that I got in other events on the further side. Um, two of the other smaller pins that I got were the... Millennium Puzzle and the Millennium Ring, but I am hoping <laughs> that we get some sweet, sweet Forbidden Swag. I see some of you guys in the chat talking about Lightning Storm. Lightning Storm is a great card, but um, yeah, I had a really good weekend. I was on the deck check team. I can't talk about any specific investigations of the event or anything like that, uh, but they certainly put us through paces. We definitely had to do a lot of work, and this is my favorite. This one is so heavy, but it's meant to go on a lanyard, so the idea is throw this around and clip this here and you can see hey it's your your duelist kingdom bling that's pretty neat um i've also got another lander you can just see it on the left side of the screen now and that is going to be the ooh, trouble getting us off get off of me uh, that's gonna be the Yu-Gi-Oh! GX one, and so they've got a lot of these lanyards where you flip it on the inside and it just says, hey, Ultimate Duelist Series, but clearly this is like, you know, Osiris Red represent or Slifer Red represent, drop out boy. Uh, this is the new regional deck box that they are giving out now, and it's got some neat compartments. It's a lot bigger than the regional deck boxes you see in the back behind me, but it's got that same magnetic door that closes, but now it's got two doors, and the second door is just for your dice, which is really cool. So you can put all your collector dice. It's not perfectly fitted for them, so any dice you use are going to be just fine. And then over here, it's got the same thing. You pull this out, and you've got your deck, and hopefully we should put some rare cards in there. It's really well made. Um, I love that it's purple. It fits very well with my favorite Yu-Gi-Oh character, clearly. But let's see if we can get some good cards. So, oh, hey, Thief. We're going to go ahead and start the stacks and just kind of go through them one after the other. Um, Ignition Assault is one of the last sets of Yu-Gi-Oh! Reigns. It's the penultimate set, we should say, the second to last. And we're just going to go through and see if we can't pull some of the big cards in this set. Actually, there's a lot of big cards in here. Um, the Ignister, at Ignister cards, I should say, don't at me, um, really are a lot more expensive than I was expecting. At least they're holding their value. But, time to go ahead and flip through here. First pack. Oh, hey! Speaking of at Ignisters, it is uh, Dolion at Ignister, which is the dark one. It is an ultra rare, actually, so if you get a good look at that. The effect is, if this card is normal or special summoned, you can target an at Ignister monster, one at Ignister, in your graveyard and add it to your hand. If this card is sent to your graveyard as the material for a link summon of a cyber monster, you can target one AI spell or trap in your graveyard add it to your hand. So it's actually just really good standard support. I see what's an ultra rare. It is the dark one representing I, um, but that's really neat. This is going to be one of the last packs where they're still including normal rares. I know that in the future, they're talking about dropping normal rares out of the set. So it's going to be really wild. Um, hopefully we can get a full playset of adding mysteries. I'd love to rock out I and pretend that I am an evil artificial intelligence. Although I'm sure some of you guys are expecting me to be that. Um, oh, hey, shiny black... C squatter. It's like Max C only Power Ranger. -y. It is a 2,000 attack effect mon or not effect monster for insects, which is really cool. But skipping through there to the big stuff, we've got Kujikid Curse. Send one level nine monster from hand or face up from field to the graveyard and draw two cards. You can only activate one of these cards once per turn. So pretty neat draw support for level nines. Um, they had Celestial Observatory for level sixes, um, seven star Sacred Sword or some combination of those words for level sevens. 
and uh, trade in for level eight. So we're kind of getting that, you know, across the board. Um, it was a really neat weekend. I had been to Tulsa for like years. It's been 12 years since I've been to Tulsa. I was a comic uh, cosplay convention guest for uh, my Ubel cosplay is what caught their eye, if I remember correctly. Whoa! Hey, okay, hold the phone. Um, Sky Striker Ace Rose. We'll talk a little bit about Tulsa in a moment. But if this, or if a Sky Striker Ace monster is normal, special summon, so it could be Rose or her compatriot, um, except Sky Striker Ace Rose. Oh, okay, so it's gotta be somebody else. My bad. Uh, you can special summon this card from your hand if an opponent's monster in the extra monster zone is destroyed by battle or leaves the field because of your effect while this card is in your graveyard you can special summon this card then you can negate the effects of one face up monster your opponent controls until the end of this turn really neat while that extra monster zone effect isn't going to be as effective once the april master rule 2020 stuff comes into play um it's still pretty cool but yeah um that infamous johnny young boss story i tell actually happened in tulsa um and that was 12 years ago today. I think I still have the program guide behind me somewhere. So if I can fish that up, I will see if I can't upload a picture of that sometime. But um, it was really neat. I actually drove up from Dallas. So uh, five hours on the road listening to various, you know, anime music as loud as you can have it. But um, I came back yesterday, but I just went right to bed. And so today, that's why I'm streaming today so that we can go ahead and do the pack opening. I think this is where we're going to get the... Hollow. Okay, so it's the new generator support that's in um, I gas, you know, ignition assault. It, you can only control one Utgarda, Utgarda generator boss of delusion. Quick effect: tribute two generator monsters and or rock monsters. Then target one card in the field, banish it. You can only use this effect once per turn. That's kind of neat. Um, it is a rock itself, so you could use this in a rock deck, and there is neat rock support coming up soon with. Um, the Secret Slayer set that's coming out. It's like one of those deck building packs. I like the way that we got Sky Strikers and Necros. But, um, still haven't hit our first Secret Rare yet. Or our first Starlight Rare. They finally called those Prismatic Secret Rares their Starlight Rares. So we actually have a name for that. Um, oh, hey, more Attic Misters. I gotta make sure I set this aside. Some commons are important. But, Abominable Unchained Soul. And I believe this was the one that was making a lot of fuss. Um, you can only special summon an abominable unchained soul once per turn. If a card you control is destroyed by battle or card effect, you can special summon this card from your hand. If this card is special summoned, discard a card and destroy a card on the field. And uh, once per turn during the end phase, if this card is in the graveyard because it was destroyed on the field and sent there this turn, you can special summon this card, but place it on the bottom of the deck when it leaves the field. It's a fiend, it's a dark, um, I think people were using this in Shadow. I can't quite remember because I know there was a particular Unchained card that took people by surprise. But since I was on the deck team, I mostly spent time with deck lists instead of seeing cool plays. That said, once we finish up our deck check duties, I did get to see the finals. I did get to see Shadows versus Rockets, which was mind-blowing. Um, let me take a look at what we got next. I feel like I might skip this track because it's about to get really way too rocking. And I don't want to cover a trick. Um, so let me take a look here. We got more commons. And oh, hey, wind Pegasus at Ignister. So it represents Windy's feelings. So one tuner and one or more non tuners. Oh, no, one tuner and one tuner. No, it says non tuner monsters. I guess they took that out. That's like the new text for one or more non tuner monsters. Uh, but it's a level 7 win, 23 injury attacks, pretty decent and pretty standard for cyberspace extra deck monsters. During your main phase, you can destroy spell or traps your opponent controls up to the number of... Oh, yeah, add a Nistra monster to control. If another card you control is destroyed by battle or an opponent's card effect, while this card is on the field or in the graveyard, you can banish this card, then target one card your opponent controls and shuffle it into the deck. So that's really neat. It's got a lot going on there. Really cool art. Um, always nice to see a wind. Wind monsters are not criminally unsupported, but they are not necessarily a cohesive theme. It is a generic synchro. It is cybers, but you don't have to have those cybers monsters. So that's pretty neat. And then we got a megalith promotion for our fancy normal rare. I am going to miss those. I am going to miss those. Because you know in Japan, it's five cards per pack, and you're not even guaranteed a hollow. And I remember when I first opened... Um, some early, gosh, it was like mythological age packs. I was like, wow, a normal rare. I just had never seen 
a Japanese rare of any kind. Uh, but then I think I got my first super from that set, which I think was the Shore Breeze. Those were the days. So let's see. More. Oh, hey. Don Yoribo. So another dark adding mister. But Kara Curry support. Um, so it's going to be Kara Curry Super Shogun MDL OON Brebu. Uh, if this card is synchro summoned, you can special summon one Kara Curry monster from your deck. Monster you control in defense position cannot be destroyed by battle once per turn. If the battle position of a face up Kara Curry monster you control is changed, which is their whole deal, um, you can target one card your opponent controls and banish it. So that and Plunder Patrol Shipyard. Nice little puns there. Um, let me make sure I can see both your messages and this, and then I'm going to close out of... You might hear some familiar sound effects in the background. I love dueling stuff, and I'm like, what is it that's causing the music to be so silly? But I might have been farming some Duel Links this here President's Day. Alright, close. Perfect. Okay. So I can see you guys. I can see all the cards. And we're good. Right? Yes! Okay. So, I mean, like, what do I really, really, really want most of all from this set? It's probably gonna be, um, probably gonna be the Lightning Storm. And I don't know if I would sell it or keep it, because Lightning Storm is such a powerful card, but I'm not really, like, like, playing decks that don't already have built-in Raigekis, or don't depend on having face-up cards on the field. So we'll see. We'll see. But that said, looks like we've got Marinces Pascalis, uh, one of uh, Blue Maiden's cards. Um, if this card is normal summon or special summon, you can special summon one Marinces monster from your hand in defense. Except Marinces Pascalis, because I guess that'd be like one, two, three, four, right? Yo fam, hey four leaf. Uh, during your main phase, except the turn this card was sent to the graveyard, you can banish this card from your graveyard, then target Marinces spell or trap in your graveyard, add it to your hand. But you can only use each effect once per turn. So really neat. Um, it's nice that we're still getting Blue Maiden cards. I say nice in the sense that um, Blue Maiden was a really, really cool like evolution for that character. I'm setting aside the adding Mr. Boss. So there's so many adding Mr. Bosses. And I do feel like I would play that. Um, that, if we get that, you can rest assured that I'm going to proudly profess like all of the various archetypes of Cybers. So, except Solomon, great. <clears throat> but... Next pack up. Time Thieves. People have been- Oh, it's Lingaribo. So it's not Link Karibo. We know Link Karibo. This is Lingaribo. And Link Karibo um, is one level four lower cyber sponsor for its materials. You know, Arrowhead's confirmed. But it is when your opponent activates a trap card, quick effect, you can tribute this card, negate that card's effect, and if you do, banish it. Problem is there's not a lot of trap cards, so it doesn't work in every archetype. But if this card is in your graveyard, you can tribute an at Ignister monster that was summoned from the extra deck, special summon this card. So there's a way to kind of like set up and, and get through those traps, and I think it's really neat. Uh, but it is very much evil Link Karibo, and it is also the spaceship that I and his pal ride around in. Robo P. Uh, let me go ahead and set that aside. Whoa, Squeak Knight. There's so much good card art, but I'm going to zoom in so you guys can get a closer look. So, linear. No, we're going to make that narrow. So that should pull us in. Okay, cool. Now we're a lot more condensed. I mean, Salamangrate are the coolest, so I'm getting some flack in the chat for that. But... And, and we still saw some fair Salamangrate support, but I just, it's not me. When I think of Yu-Gi-Oh! Vrains and Cybers, I think first, a Playmaker, and second, of I, and third, of the actual good deck Salamangrates. So that's just me being an anime nerd. Uh, speaking of I, there's I's Ritual. So all the I cards have good old I on it, even though he doesn't look like that in the anime at the time. And then, okay, Jack Obolon. That's horrifying. I mean, like, really get a good look at that. So, you can discard one zombie monster, special summon this card from your hand. During your opponent's main phase, quick effect, uh, you can target one zombie monster in either player's graveyard, which would be relevant with Zombie World, and then special summon that monster, but banish it when it leaves the field. Then banish this face-up card until the end phase, so it comes back. So that's really a neat little, I don't want to say it's like a discount zombie master, because it very much has its own unique effect, 
but that was that's really interesting so we've almost gone through the first half of a box and still no secret rares and still no prismatic secret rares which is a shame um, i'm also going to show my play mats at the end of this so that you guys can get a cool look at all the other swag that i got besides all the pins and everything so let us see what's next megalith aratron so megaliths because of certain rulings are really difficult to summon um the issue is is that on a ritual spell you can only tribute the correct amount and you can't go over it you can't like double load it so for instance what i mean by that is if you have a four star uh ritual monster you can't tribute both a four star ritual and a or excuse me a four star level material and then an eight star level material as well because you've already met it with that force so you have to find a combination of maybe like a three and an eight is fine because the three doesn't make it but then you've got the eight which is already enough so there are various game mechanics that make this deck not as good as it can be with that in mind take a look at the effect and maybe you'll understand you can ritual summon this card with a megalith card during the main phase quick effect you can discard this card ritual summon a megalith monster from your hand by tributing monsters from your hand or field whose total levels equal or exceed its level. But you still have to keep that rule in mind that I mentioned. That's from the Yu-Gi-Oh! Starter Deck if you want to take a look at it. If you just look at the Starter Deck Instruction Manual. When your opponent activates a card or effect that targets a card you control, quick effect, you can place one Ritual man Monster from your graveyard on the bottom of your deck. And if you do, negate that activation. And if you do with that, destroy that card. So destroy it. So it's a really great series that, like, unfortunately the rules kind of get in the way. Um, speaking of rules, here's a Sky Striker Maneuver card. Sisters Cross. Oh, hey. It's Ray. And I guess this is supposed to be Rose. But if you control no monsters in your main monster zone, target a level 4 Sky Striker Ace in your graveyard, add it to your hand. Or if you have three or more spell cards, you can special summon the set. So that's really neat. Um, Sky Strikers didn't see as much play because without the use of Sky Striker Mobilize Engage, they're just not the best deck anymore. So that's kind of nice as somebody who got, you know, somebody ran into it a lot. Uh, as somebody who played Mystic Mind Destiny Board. That was, those were some fun times, but at the same time, it was really difficult to get through engaged, searching things like, you know, afterburners, etc. So, uh, up oh, there's another Abominable and Chain Soul. We already know what that does. We're going to set that aside. And then there's the Fire Phoenix at Ignister. Set that aside, too. Wow, it's still so weird that they're putting Pikaru and Karan on the card still. Like, Yu-Gi-Oh! stories go on and on and on. So that's half a box. And nothing, which is unfortunate. So, let's hope. And no cheating box. Alright, this is interesting. How come some of these packs are backwards? These were hand-packed by Konami. So, I wonder what's going on here. Does that mean there's anything in here? Have they been blessed? Uh, let's see. Armory Call, Gravity Controller, Link Party. Nope, it's another Aerotron. Is this the same one that we just got? I think so. Yeah, Aerotron. So put that over there, and then Fiendish Portrait. And then, oh, poor Earth. Man, I still kind of choke up when I see... They flash back to, to... Flashed back. That's a hard one. To it a lot when a certain Earth-based character may have passed in Yu-Gi-Oh! Reigns. And it was so painful to watch that over and over and over again. And yeah, Thief, I really can use that Pharaoh luck. But let's see. So nothing, nothing. Obviously the comments. Oh, hey, we got another Ultra Rare. This time it's going to be one of the new Plunder Monsters. So it is Blackbeard, the Plunder Patrol Captain, and he's a troll. So two monsters, including a Plunder Patrol monster. You can target one effect monster you control, special summon a Plunder Patrol monster from your extra deck with the same attribute as a monster your opponent controls or is in the graveyard. And if you do, equip that target to it, then draw one card. So basically, this is just like their go-to plan from what it seems. And those trolls are like, they're not... Yu-Gi-Oh style artwork. They're almost like too cute for that. That's really interesting. I wonder if all the Plunder Patrol cards kind of have that motif where it looks a little bit more Western. And then there's Earth Golem adding Mister. Set that aside. I know, Lightning Storm in three packs. Wouldn't that be? Wouldn't it be great to have Lightning Storm? Wait, Lightning Storm in three packs. Does that mean like three different packs and there's a piece of Lightning Storm each time? Oh, hey, Gauntlet. So let's see. This is going to be another Jack Bolon, which is a really cool card. But despite the fact that zombies have been getting so much support, like my Akashi, the zombie structure deck with Baldurok, and even some of the lore that they put out about the zombies in the recent Valuable book in Japan, I'm just not a zombie player. And there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, 
well, in Duel Links I am, because we were playing all of the Vendrez. Bo, can you see it? You can see it, right? You can see it. That's a Prismatic Secret Rare. So we got something. All right, fam, are you ready? Are you ready? It could be anything. I'd be happy with any Prismatic Secret Rare, but it is. Oh, wow, it's Ausa the Earth Charmer. That, so these come very rarely, and so even though it is not the Lightning Vortex, it's in pretty good condition too. These usually come with a little bit of curving in it though. But yeah, so if you don't know what this monster does, it is two monsters, including an Earth monster, and it's always treated as a familiar possessed card. Man, the hollow on that is nuts. So you can target an Earth monster in your opponent's graveyard and special summon it to a zone this card points to. If this Link summon card is destroyed by battle or is destroyed by an opponent's card effect, while in its owner's monster zone, you can add one Earth monster with 1500 less attack. So it's just like Hito or the Wind one they've got. And uh, this needs to go in a sleeve. So that's really big. So I'm not a big Earth person, so we might buy some Magician Souls with this. That's crazy, dude. That's really, really neat. No, I know. Burn decks aren't exactly on anybody's favorite list. Yeah, this needs to go in a sleeve. Hold that thought. Hold, hold that thought. Uh, that's the first prismatic that I have ever pulled, and I'm so happy that I was able to share that moment with you guys. I'm not an Earth person. I'm a, I'm a Mars person. So yeah, we'll go ahead and get that in there. So pulled straight from a pack and put into a sleeve. I mean, Taya burns all right. Okay, so that's one Starlight Rare. Not a Prismatic, Starlight Rare. Can we pull two? Well, that was early on, too, into the, the pseudo box. These are random packs. So there was something special about those. It's really interesting that we were able to see that from the edges. So we know this one is not that because it is Megalith Ophiel, which is a four star. So you can ritual summon this card with a Megalith card. And if this card is Ritual 7, you can add a Megalith monster from your deck to your hand, except Megalith uh, Ophiel, which is this card. And then during your main phase, you can activate this effect, Ritual Summon a Monster, Ritual Monster, uh, by tributing monsters from your hand, including this card, whose levels equal or exceed. So that's where the issue is, because if you're going to do another 4, you can only tribute this to get a different 4. You couldn't do this and an 8. It would have to be this 4. So that's what makes these cards a little tricky rulings-wise and don't quite work the way a lot of players thought they might. So I'm going to go ahead and leave Homegirl right here. Oh no, Gontre. Now I see why you're salt. Well, better luck next duel. I mean, the Kaiba Court Cup is over as a recording of this, but let's see. Guard Ghost. Now I'm so excited. Now I just like want to peek just to see... Um, hey, we did get a secret rare, though, and it's a really good one. It is Giznek Kaku, the Shining, excuse me, Supreme Shining Sky Stag. And so if a monster is in the extra monster zone, you can special summon this card from your hand. You can target one face-up monster in the extra monster zone. Equip that face-up card to this card, max one. And when this card destroys an opponent's monster by battle, you can special summon one of your monster cards equipped to this card. So, it's really good against Link decks, but it's not necessarily as good against decks that are going to take advantage of the April 2020 rules. That is that monsters that are fusion, synchro, exceeds no longer have to have Link monsters pointing to the main monster zones in order for them to be special summoned to the main monster zones. But, it is pretty cool, at least for another two months. So, that's... That's pretty neat. Ants Machine. The Fire Machine. Oh, and hey, I love Fusion. I love Fusion, too. All right, that might need to get set right there for the moment, and then we'll set these here. So we're actually having pretty good pretty good luck on pulls here. I don't know if it's just like the Millennium Puzzle, like, entrusting us with its luck. Strong guys pull strong cards. I don't know. But we'll see. But I'm so hyped. After seeing what this looks like to pull this from a pack, I just want to, like, look. But we did get that secret rare, and it didn't have the edging, so that's totally okay. So sometimes good cards will come without the use of that. But this may not be that time. This is a Witchcrafter card, Witchcrafter Genny. Uh, Witchcrafters are a series of spellcasters that can reuse their spell cards, which is kind of the spellcaster thing anyway. Uh, they came out in one of the deck building packs. So not necessarily something I'm really excited about, but during the main phase, quick effect, you contribute this card and discard one spell. Special summon a Witchcrafter monster from your deck, except Witchcrafter Denny. You can banish this card and one Witchcrafter spell from your graveyard. 
this effect becomes that spell's effect when that card is activated, which is pretty cool. So there's a great way to reuse, not necessarily the spell itself, but the effect of that spell. And then we've got Annihilator Archfiend. Well, I can help you on that. So everybody's sound is going to be different, because I checked it a little bit myself, but let's try it like that. Up next... And then we've got... Is it a prismatic? No, it's not a prismatic, but does that mean it's a bad card? No, it's Code Talker Inverted. So some cyber stuff, Playmaker style. If this card is like monster, and by the way, the materials are two cyber monsters, you can special summon a cyber monster from your hand that this, oh, to your zone that this card points to. So the issue with that is you got to at least start like Link Karibo or Link Disciple and get that down and then make him and then you can special summon that. So that does not surprise me. That must have been YCS Nagoya. Is that right? That's crazy. Well, I'm going to hold on to this. I still have all my other stuff. I don't have like, I need some of the micro coders, but I do have um, all the stuff that came out of the video games. I got three copies of the video game. Silly me. And I need to get everything from the uh, Fire Fist Gadgets pack. Let me go ahead and flip that out. Let's see. Gravity Controller. Oh, it's another Megalith Aratron. Which isn't bad, necessarily. But from the rulings issues that we talked about, I don't know if this Megalith stuff is for us. So we're going to put these comments aside. I mean, I could make a Megalith wall. I'm thinking about making new palettes for the card wall that are, like, themed. So, like, just a wall that, maybe not Megalith, per se, but, like, just a Neospatian wall, etc. I don't think I'm ready to put hollow cards on the wall, but we'll see. So, take a look. Yeah, I know they didn't stream YCS Nagoya, so I didn't get to kind of review the coverage. Oh, it's Ophiel. That's going to be, what, the second Ophiel? So, building up that playset. Matching outfits. That poor goblin. He didn't want the shirt, and now he has the shirt. But, hey, so does his dad. Family. Okay, we didn't accidentally sort that in. Oh, hey! Thank you for following, fam. I'm not sure why the alert box didn't show that, though. Oh, wow. Oh, because it's behind. Okay. Oh, man. You know, Arm Dragon for Hired sounds like a great deck. Oh, whoa. I skipped ahead, but that's okay. That gives us our second Plunder Patrol Captain. It just looks very Western. Like, the design... It's got a really different look to it that's really cool. But we're not quite ready to play Plunder Patrol because while we do have um, several Plunder Patrol Link monsters, we don't have the Xyz or any of the other extra deck monsters. So we can't even resolve the effect yet. Except, I guess, we could use a Plunder Patrol Captain to summon another Plunder Patrol Captain. But I don't know about that. That may not be it, Chief. After this, we're going to go to conventional dual link streaming. But like I said, I wanted to do the pack opening first, and then we'll move on to that. Um, we're also going to show up those play mats that I mentioned earlier. All right. It's not prismatic. That's so crazy to see it from there, but it is. Oh, hey, Light Dragon Attic Mister. So this is wild. It's the cover card, but they decided to bump this down to a super rare in the TCG English version of this. But uh, we pulled the water, the... Earth one is a normal rare. We did get the fire one because it's right there. Uh, we got the wind one, which is a super. I think we actually got almost all of them with the light one. The only element that would be missing, earth, wind, fire, water, light, dark. I don't remember what the dark one is in the set, but we'll see. Oh, I, I guess it is. It would have to be because Eternity Code doesn't have that. It's got all the other crazy stuff. So without further ado, this level four generic Xyz monster uh, what its ability is, is if a monster, it's two level fours by the way, it's what I meant by generic. If a monster you control would be destroyed by card effect, you can detach a material from this card instead. And you can only use each of the following effects of Light Dragon at Ignister once per turn. You can detach a material from this card, destroy face up monsters your opponent controls up to the number of at Ignister monsters you control. So it's kind of like a soft little Raigeki. I mean, you can actually destroy one, but if you have a full field, you can destroy even more than that. And when another cyber monster you control inflicts battle damage to your opponent, you can special summon one Link monster from your graveyard, which is pretty cool. So, I mean, there are still going to be strategies that use Links for sure. Uh, this would be one of them. But it's going to be really cool that you can put the fusion, like, right out without having to do anything. So that is the first box worth of cards. And so far, not too bad when you look at the fact that we got 
So this is true random. These packs are not um, sorted together. I guess these are all commons. Whoops, there's the Doyobi. Make sure the rare got over here. And all the supers are cool, but we got one, two, three, four, five ultras, one secret, and this is not guaranteed in any capacity, one starlight rare, which is really cool. It's a link monster. So let me go ahead and lightly shuffle these aside so they don't get scratched up. And then put that over here. And then we're gonna go into stack two. Thank you. Yeah, the wall is, it's a real wall, but what it is, it's, it's individual panels. So a panel starts like right here. Yeah, right here. And it goes up to right here. And those panels are taped together and then those curtains are pinned up and that's what gives that full effect. It goes on for quite a bit. But, all right. 24 more packs to go. And hopefully the next 24 packs have just as many surprises. Oh, oops, that's upside down. I guess that's the first surprise, right? Uh, let's see. Uh, nope, it's gonna be the Generator Boss of Delusion. And generators are cool, and the new Judge Mats for Travel Assist, which I did not get because I did not travel that far to get from Texas to Oklahoma since the states are neighboring. Um, maybe later this year that'll be a thing. But even though generators are very pretty, they don't necessarily, um, play that well for lack of a better way to describe them it's a really cool deck type with a lot of vision but somewhere out there there's some generator guy watching us and he's just like no i'll show you the power of my generators but i haven't seen that power just yet oh wow it's another gizmag i was just like doing that trick that i had been doing before to see whether or not it was a starlight and man that's we're we're two cards into a playset here so that's really neat Guess, uh, yeah, we'll set that aside with all of the other hollows. Hang on, I'll move the light here so it's not totally glaring. Nope, that's not gonna work, so we're gonna move the cards instead. Yeah, not bad at all. So put that down, and then the super rare from that pack was... Was there no super rare from that pack, or did I accidentally sort it aside already? The world may never know. Haha, ha, friends who play fire decks. Fire decks like Salamangrates, huh? Alright, so next up. Oh, hey. So if you wonder why I look up and not down, it's because I've got the same screen that you're watching in front of me, and it's a little easier. But, um, it's Ancient Warriors is what they ended up translating these Seika monsters. And so it's a whole sort of ancient Chinese mythology archetype. Um, if your opponent... If only your opponent controls the monster, you can special summon this card from your hand, and it is quite a few stars, so not a normal summon otherwise. Uh, your opponent cannot target other ancient warrior monsters you control with card effects. 2500 attacks, pretty good. If your opponent controls more monsters than you do, you can target one monster your opponent controls and destroy it. Well, you know they're going to control quite a few monsters because, well, that doesn't necessarily line up, but the idea is they've got two, plop this out, destroy their other one. So that's actually a really cool monster. Um, I haven't been paying attention to whether or not we've been getting other Ancient Warrior cards, but it is a deck that is all within Ignition Assault. I think there might be some later support cards in Eternity Code. Can't recall straight off the top, but we'll see. Oh, haha, -ha, Ancient Elf. <laughs> now there's a whole Ancient Archetype. Link. Oh, wow. Okay, that's what I'm talking about. Plunder Patrol Ship Braum. Remember we talked about how the Plunder Captain, the Troll Captain, could bring out the stuff? Well, here's what he can bring out. All other Fiend-type monsters you control gain 500 attack. You can discard one Plunder Patrol card, target a spell or trap your opponent controls, and banish it. Then you can add a Plunder Patrol monster from your deck to your hand. This is a quick effect if this card is equipped with a Plunder Patrol card. So I guess we'll have to find some Plunder Patrol cards, but that's neat. So we are slowly but surely working our way up here. And then there's another Ancient Warrior. Okay, neat. So, it's a lot of fire in this box. But I guess it's just like all kinds of elements. I think that's really what Ignition Assault is about, is that various elements can be good. There, I'm like, there's so much light, I still want you to be able to see what we pulled. But I've got to use the deck box to block the solar radiation of the lights that I've got pointed at me. Alright, so let's move these comments out of the picture and work our way through here. No, it's not the stream ending music. I usually play this as the stream ending music and my YouTube trailer music, but it is not the case. But we did get Ophiel, 
Which, oh, and hey, there is the Earth Golem adding this rare. After fusion summons, so it's a Cyburst and a Lynx. So you could you could probably use that as a super polymerization target. Um, if you were playing... Yeah, if you were playing against Salamangrates, you could use this. Is this better, though, than Violet Chimera? Let's see. After this card's fusion summon, you take no damage for the rest of the turn. If this card attacks a monster that was special summoned from the extra deck, this card gains attack equal to its original attack during the damage step. So, that's interesting. This card gains... I guess it must be 2300, so it doubles. Um, when this card is destroyed by battle, you can target a Cyber monster you control... No, excuse me, in your graveyard, and special summon it. You can only use this effect once per turn. So, that's interesting. I don't know that that's better than Violet Chimera, but it does. it is another viable choice. Take a look here as we continue through the ages. Double-edged sword. Megalith Hologic. No, oh, it is another light dragon at Ignister. So we are getting close to super replace that. And then, of course, I love fusion. So how does this work? I guess this must work with Doyobi. Fusion summon a Cyber's fusion monster from your extra deck using monsters from your hand or field as fusion material. If... You use your adding Mr. Monster as fusion material. You could also use a Link Monster your opponent controls. So again, it kind of is something that envisioned Yu-Gi-Oh! Reigns and not Master Rule 2020. I've heard people call it Master Rule 5. Technically, it's Master Rule 2020. So let's see. Oh, I see an Ultra. Might have gone too fast here. Wow, third Plunder Patrol Captain. That's cool. So we have actually built up a place that a Plunder Patrol Captains. Am I the Pirate King? Kai Zoko Oni Ore wa Naru desu ka? That's me asking in Japanese, have I become the Pirate King? One Piece jokes. I'm sure one One Piece fan exists somewhere in the world. Alright. Nine Lives Cat. Some added Mr. Stuff. Squeak Knight. Oh, another Code Talker Inverted. I don't know that I like Code Talker Inverted. It's I get it, but... It feels like one of those one-ofs in Cybers, which runs a lot of one-ofs and has a really populated extra deck. If you're not playing, like, Ignisters, and you're not playing Salamangrate, and you're playing just, like, Playmaker Spam, this feels, like, good, and will definitely take up, like, as part of some combo, but you just get rid of it immediately. So let me see. Put the commons aside, and we've got one, two, three, four left in this side. Yeah, literally the most popular manga ever, One Piece jokes. Okay, so Guard Ghost, Megalith, Time Thief Perpetual. So what makes these Time Thieves so exceptional? During the standby phase, you can detach one material from this card, then target one Time Thief monster in your graveyard, except Time Thief Perpetua. Special summon that monster. And, quick effect, check this out. You can target one other Xyz monster you control, which will be really important during Master Rule 2020, where you can just plop those Xyz monsters out without a Link monster. Attach a Time Thief card from your deck to it as material. You can only use each effect once per turn. That does seem really, like, standardly good. And it's just two level 4 monsters. Which means they can use various combo extenders. Oh, hey! Plunder Patrol Shipyard! So, getting those Playmaker cards. Getting those Plunder Patrol cards. Getting those Time Thief cards. But we're not getting generic Lightning Storms yet. But there's still time. There's the Ice Ritual... Charged up Heraldry, Gravity Controller, Doyobi, and... Oh, another Ancient Warriors. No, but this is the same one. Loyal, Guam, Hulun. Don't know enough about Chinese mythology to comment on how cool it is for those cards to be switched. But it does have that, like, Romance of the Three Kingdoms, Dynasty Warriors vibe to it. So, I can appreciate that, because I'm definitely a fan of those series. Let's see... Oh! I did another skip. It's hard. I'm trying to... These, these commons are tightly packed. But it's another Wind Pegasus at Ignister, which is a really good Synchro Monster. Um, I don't know how many I would main deck in an at Ignister deck, but it seems like I'm getting all the at Ignister cards I need. Um, we are missing some stuff, like the Field Spell, the Eye Field Spell. So this may not be an entire Eye deck in one go, but we'll see what we can pull. Guard Ghost. I think this will be the Hollow next. It's going to be Generator, Boss of Delusion. So I think we're way at pass. That might be the third or the fourth. We get it, Generators. You're a real deck. All right, fam. Last stack, and then we'll go on to the play knots. I'm just going to pick at random here. Doo, 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 doo,
do. Got that vibe going on, like the Vagabond with the hat too low. All right. Witchcrafter Ganny, we already went over it. It is a nice utility for the Witchcrafter engine, but it's not necessarily something that I'm excited for because I'm not a Witchcrafter, but it is a neat deck. Like if somebody was like, yeah, I'm a Witchcrafter duelist, that's all I do. I would wholly respect them because it is like a really interesting deck. And I guess this could be set of generators too, even though I've been a little harder on them this stream than most. Uh, let's see. Megalith, Daruma. Looks like another Burebu. I mean, it could be three back-to-back -back lightning storms. Never say never. Die another day. No time to pull. And other James Bond lols. All right, here we go. So that one wasn't the big one. Oh, Time Thief Chrono Quarter. Is that? That's a lightning. Yep. Light Dragon adding this. I think that's number three. So we did get that. I mean, that's the thing. I've already pulled huge. So, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Idol Reborn. I was like, no, I won't let go just yet. I I love Playmaker. I mean, I know I have said that Brains is the best Yu-Gi-Oh! series a couple of times. Only to be compared to the original, but it, it really is. <laughs> Playmaker has always been my favorite, other than Yami Yugi since it came out. I think that's going to be number four on the added mysteries. I probably should have been keeping track of these. Oh, hey, Ancient Warrior Saga, Sun Liu Alliance, Sun Liu, Sun Liu Alliance. I feel like there's more comments in here than normal. So what do we got here? If you control Ancient Warriors monsters with two or more different attributes, you can declare an attribute your opponent. Oh, your opponent cannot activate the effects of monsters they can currently control with that attribute. Call Divine, right? Um... Until the end of this turn, even if this card leaves the field. If your opponent special summons a monster, or if you activate Ancient Warrior's monster's effects, except during the damage step, you can make all Ancient Warrior monsters you control gain 300 attack for each Ancient Warrior monster you control until the end of the turn. Even if this card leaves the field. So it's like nice permanent gains. And you can only use each effect of Ancient Warrior Saga Sun Liu Alliance once per turn. It's really neat. It's a really neat like archetype that... I might have to like watch some some gameplay to wholly appreciate. All right, up next, is it a Prisma? No, it's not a Prismatic. So maybe it's just normal Secret Rare Lightning Storms. Uh, Gauntlet Oil. Oh hey, yes, another Doyo and Adding So That's gonna be number two for me, which gets me a little bit closer. And then we've got a Water Ancient Warrior. You can target a continuous spell card you control. Okay, that that makes sense to me. Uh, send it to the graveyard, and if you do, add an Ancient Warrior monster spell, or Ancient Warrior spell or trap with a different name from your graveyard to your hand. So swap, that's cool. Um, if your other Ancient Warrior's monster effect is activated, you can target a spell or trap card your opponent controls and destroy it. You can only use one of those and each of those once per turn. So Ancient Warriors seem like really cool. It's, it's just a really neat deck that wasn't on my radar when it first came out. I know I made a big post of it on my Facebook page, Yu-Gi-Oh! United, but... Let's see, is that... No. I'm getting too hyped. Now that I've done it, I feel like I can do it all the time. Uh, this is another Loyal Guan Yun. Still really cool, though. So that's a playset of Guan Yun. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six packs left. Let's see what we can do. I know, you're right. Okay, let me just do it. You're right. I should stop spoiling it. I should just go. So, without looking, without getting too excited. Oh, hey, Masterful Sun Mu. That's cool. It's an ultra rare Ancient Warrior. While you control another Ancient Warrior's monster, your opponent's monsters cannot target this card for attack. So he's the hider. Uh, you can only use each of the following effects once per turn. You can send a card from your hand or field to the graveyard, add an Ancient Warrior's monster from your deck to your hand, except Masterful Sun Mu. If your Ancient Warrior's monster effect is activated, except during the damage step, oh, other Ancient Warriors, so gotta be somebody else, target a monster your opponent controls and return it to the hand. Man, I can see how this works. It's very Six Samurai, like this, 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 that. This to the hand, banish this, destroy that. That's really neat. Oh, hey, and look, he came with a partner. That's exceptional. I might, I might do that. I've been really wanting to go and participate in more local tournaments. I judge regionals. I judge YCS, and sometimes I'll play at the Ultimate Duelist series, which I didn't this time, I judge. 
But there's no more Ultimate Duelist series, so I gotta pick a new, like, where do I get my, my competitive level playing out? Um, and maybe I'll start going to locals instead of saving it for just the highest level events. Um, sometimes I'll play at YCSs depending on where the location is. Alright, here we go. Oh, another Barebu. I want to say that's Barebu 4. While the victory music is playing, uh, we haven't quite... Whoa, Bellcat Fighter 3 monsters including a token. Well, I know what that's for. That's for uh, Mecha Phantom Beasts. When this card destroys an opponent's monster by battle, you can special summon a Bellcat token in defense mode. That's interesting. <laughs> Mutually Afferred Destruction is a the messed up name. Like, the most messed up name out of everything we've seen. Wait, let me make sure the normal rare is placed over there. So, um, let's see what we got. Yeah, that makes sense. Me and my boys IRL the meme. That is Ancient Warriors in a nutshell. All right, no spoilers. Gravity Controller, Link Party. Man, there really are just all the different Link monsters. Hoshingen, um, the, oh man, I can't remember all the names now that I'm put on the spot. Uh, Mrs. Radiant, um, oh, the weird one. Ah, well, I can't remember my classic Yu-Gi-Oh names. Um, they are like the super big, cause I mean, I know that's Starboy, and I know that's, um, Little Chimera. It's Do Little Chimera. Do Little Chimera. And it's like Superstar Hoshingen, and Miles Radiant. Ah, gosh, okay. I'm, I'm doing myself a great disservice by trying to remember all those names. Another delusion, unfortunately, but we did get an Ivory Born. So I really would love, almost more than a Lightning Storm. I would love to be inspired by one of these last packs to build the eye adding Mr. Deck. So give me that field spell. I bet I've cursed it. I bet it's like, you should have been inspired anyway. Now you're going to get nothing but Marincess cards. Not that there's anything wrong with Marincess. All right. Nine lives cat. There's going to be the hollow. It is Barebu. We're over cap on Barebu. But we did get another one of the Ancient Warriors cards. So... Sort those commons, a tale of two packs. Well, this one's upside down. Still got that one last pack, but we might hold that till after we take a look at all the play mats. So, Eyes Ritual, Hiyari added Mr. Oh, it's a Genny. I mean, it's beautiful, but it is not what we want. Oh, but nice, okay. I might actually be able to build that Lu Jing deck. Oh, hey, Edsta. All right, last pack we're gonna save because first I want to actually show you all the new play mats that I picked up, and I'll do that by swapping the cameras here. So, let me go to. Is it gonna be that one? Yeah. Okay. Cool. And so then I can pull these off and then pull that down. Cool. Okay. Play mat time. So first off is the new regional mat. You might have seen this before. It is the IP Mascarena, the powerful link monster that you can use, you know, to quick effect and steal your opponent's monster for a link summon. Really popular card, but also really popular play mat. Uh, you get that for last season's regional championship qualifiers. The next one is going to be the one of the older judge mats. Uh, it's not super old, but it does say 2019, and we are in the year 2020. I'm going to leave this one sealed, but it is the Magician of Chaos, the ritual monster that is very popular in Duel Links right now. So that one's really neat. Probably my favorite, uh, except for the other two that blew my mind. Um, check this out. This is going to be... It's a judge mat, and there's a great trap card that actually features judges on it and so it's a judge trying to sit here like oh what's the right decision what's the right decision the effect of the card is to flip two coins and if the result is the same then you either negate or don't negate the effect and so that's kind of like the judge trying to figure out here am i going to overturn this ruling am i going to affirm this ruling what am i going to do so it is the ultimate judge mat because it is an actual judge mat um we also have the regional championship mat Take a look at this. It's all of the various Adding Mister monsters, uh, except the Light Dragon, which is kind of weird. But I guess they didn't do the Light uh, Adding Mister Dragon because it was on the Sneak Preview mat, which we're no longer doing Sneak Peek events, so that might be actually a rare item. But yeah, I mean, it's got everybody else on here. 
And then, last but not least, and this was a total surprise, they did a new win amount. The last win amount I was really excited about, it was a Bakura amount, featuring all the stuff from the new Legendary Duelist pack, and that was convenient because I was cosplaying Bakura at the YCS Dallas. Well, take a look at this! It is the man himself, and the pack art from Legendary Duelist's Magical Hero. This... I love this map. I, I love... Love, love, love this mat. And this is probably my go-to cosplay mat. I've had a lot of different Yami Yugi mats where when I show up and it's time to duel, this is it. But this is, this is definitely like the new mat. So, with that aside, let's go ahead and open this new pack and open this new pack. I gotta pull up the other camera angle. And we're gonna do it. Just slowly but surely. Just, just... Play this out. Okay. So it's not that. Actually, I really want to do this. I'm going to shuffle the cards without looking. And then we're going to spread these out. Okay, and we're just going to go for it. Is it this one? Oh no, I'm that good. It's Jacko Bolon. So I was hoping to be hunting that down. The normal rare was also, um, looks like the Sky Striker Maneuver card. Whoops! Hey, you know what, though? Let's review everything we got, because we definitely pulled well. It wasn't the best you could pull, but it certainly wasn't the least you could pull, either. So, in review, um, supers are gonna all be over there. But we did get Ancient Warriors, Sunmu. We got two Doyobi, or excuse me, Doyon. Adagnister, so we are building that Adagnister deck. We got one, two, three, uh, Blackbeard, the Plunder Patrol Captain. We also got his ship, the Plunder Patrol ship Brawn. We got one, two copies of Gizmet Kaku, the Supreme Shining Sky Stag. Uh, we did get a Lingaribo, which does facilitate that. We did get a Rose, just in case anybody still thinks that Sky Strikers are a thing. Um, but most importantly, we got the Earth Charmer, which is just so cool. If you haven't seen one of these, these are very rare, and they only make a few of them each box. Uh, the biggest one, obviously, is the Lightning Storm, the sort of Raigeki Harpy's Feather Duster-like card. That one, the retail value of that is $450, but this is still a really, really big card. And... While I don't have any Magician Souls yet, I know how I'm going to get them now. Um, I was a little hesitant to get Magician Souls because I wanted to wait until I had an event coming up where I could cosplay Yami Yugi and play it. I mean, I'm not going to play Spiral. I'm not going to use it as a, um, what do you call it, Lunalite engine, you know what I mean, with Apprentice Loose Magician. I'm going to use it to send Dark Magician or Dark Magician Girl to the graveyard. And after seeing it, playtesting with it enough with some proxies, I definitely am going to get it. But now I know exactly what cards I'm going to trade for it. So we've kind of gone over everything. I'm going to switch into Duel Links mode. But thank you so much for watching the pack opening. And uh, whenever I do another pack and opening, pack, pack and opening, pack unboxing, pack opening, I'll be putting it on YouTube. And I'm also going to be putting this one on YouTube too. So thanks again for checking that out. And then now...